Hey, I'm Ari Henning from Motorcyclist Magazine, and in this video from the MC Garage, we show you how to give a fork about your suspension. Your motorcycle suspension needs periodic maintenance. This is going to be a step-by-step -step guide on how to rebuild a traditional right-side-up fork. The first step is removing the fork legs off the bike. It'll be a lot easier to crack the fork cap free if you do it while it's still clamped in the triple clamp, but if you've already removed the legs, you'll want to clamp the tube in a soft jaw vise. Crack the fork cap free, but don't completely loosen it just yet. There's also a bolt at the bottom of the fork tube that we need to loosen. The bolt at the bottom of the fork is too recessed to be accessed with your average Allen socket, so it may be necessary to buy a long reach piece or improvise by cutting the foot off a spare Allen key and then turning it using the appropriate size socket. Just loosen the bolt for now, and if it's extremely stubborn, applying heat from a propane torch will help get it free. The fork cap is loose and the damp rod bolt is loose, and now we're going to remove the fork cap all the way. The spring is applying pressure to the fork cap, so it's going to try and pop off once you unthread it. You definitely want to use some care when doing this. It's a good idea that once you see the sealing o-ring, that you cover the cap with the rag and turn it the rest of the way. This will help prevent it from flying off into your shop. Things are about to get oily, so now is a good time to lay out some newspaper or pig mat and put on some latex gloves. Remove the fork cap and set it aside, and then fish out the washers, preload spacer, fork spring, and in this case, the gold valve emulator. A magnet on a stick is going to be really handy here, but you can also use a cut-up clothes hanger. Do yourself a favor and lay everything out on your mat in the order that it was removed. Now we're going to drain the fork oil. You'll want a suitable container, and you'll want to stroke the fork several times to help dispel all the old oil. Look at that dirty old stuff. Now it's time to remove the chrome stanchion from the lower fork leg. We're going to unscrew the bolt that we cracked free earlier in the process. You may find that when you turn that bolt, something inside the fork is spinning. That's the damper rod. If that's the case, reinstall the fork spring, the preload spacer, and the fork cap to put some pressure on the damper rod, and then turn the bolt. Now we're going to remove the dust seal from the fork leg. Make sure you keep this thing level because it's still filled with some pretty dirty oil. Use a flat bladed screwdriver to pry the dust seal off the fork leg. Be extra careful that you don't slip and gouge the stanchion. Next, use your screwdriver to remove the snap ring. Woo! Now we're going to separate the fork. You're essentially going to be using the stanchion and the inner fork bushing as a slide hammer to drive the fork seal out of the fork lower. Give it a few good hits and it should come right out. There we go. Here are the rest of the parts. You have the fork seal, a steel washer, the inner bushing that the stanchion slides along, and then we also have a bottom out cone and the damper rod. I'm going to lay all the components out in order, and now we're going to inspect them, clean them, replace the wear components, and reassemble everything. You'd never take a fork this far apart and not replace your oil seal, but you might decide to reuse your bushings, in which case you want to inspect it and make sure that the inner slick surface is intact. So here are the parts of your fork. You have the fork cap, washers and preload spacer, fork spring, gold valve emulator, dust seal, circlip, oil seal, washer, outer bushing, damper rod, bottom out cone, and the stanchion with the inner bushing, as well as the fork lower. I'm now going to clean all of these components. You can use an aerosol solvent or even isopropyl alcohol. We'll be replacing all of the wear components in this fork, including the oil seals and bushes. These kits from All Balls contain everything you need and are available online for about 60 bucks. To remove the inner bush from the stanchion, use your screwdriver and gently spread the bush and then slide it off the leg. Now it's out with the old stuff and in with the fresh new stuff. The first thing we're going to do is install the stanchion bushing. You should just be able to spread the bush with your fingers and slide it on the stanchion. Throughout assembly, we'll be lubricating all of the friction components with clean fork oil. Lubricate the fork stanchion bushing liberally. Next up, we're going to take the damper rod, slide it into the stanchion, 
and then take the bottom out cone and place it over the end. Now take your fork lower and slide it on. And press it firmly against the end. Up next, you have your damper rod bolt with nice clean threads, and you're gonna install a fresh copper crush washer from your kit. Put a very small amount of blue thread lock on the threads. Then we're gonna screw this into the bottom of the fork into the damper rod. With the damper rod bolt installed, the two parts of the fork are now connected. We haven't torqued the bolt yet because we still need to put it in the spring and the spacer and the fork cap to apply some pressure to the damper rod so it doesn't spin. First, we're gonna install the upper bush, the oil seal, the dust seal, and everything else. Next up is the outer bushing. As with the inner bushing, we're gonna lubricate it liberally with fork oil and then slide it down the stanchion. The outer bush rests in a recess just below where the oil seal will go, and getting it seated can be a real pain. I like to slide the washer over it and then use a fork seal driver or a length of pipe to gently tap it home. Resist the urge to press on it with a screwdriver, although you may need to use one to help get the bush started into the bore. Once you've driven the bushing home, you can leave the washer in place and it's time to prepare your oil seal. Lubricate the inner lip liberally with quality grease, then slide it over the top of the fork tube. Covering the tube with a thin plastic bag will ease installation and help avoid damaging the seal lip. Press the seal in as far as you can with your fingers, ensuring that it's square in the bore. To drive the seal home, there are plenty of purpose-made tools like this fork seal driver, but a lot of people use PVC pipe to fabricate their own fork seal driver, and it just so happens that this inch and a half ID ABS pipe is a perfect fit for the oil seal on this CBR fork. Strike the seal firmly to drive it home. You'll know when it's seated because you'll feel it, but you'll also know because the groove for the snap ring will be fully exposed. Next, install the snap ring, being careful not to damage the stanchion. If the snap ring doesn't jump right into the groove, that's a sure sign that your oil seal hasn't been pressed down far enough. Next up is the dust seal, which you can usually seat with just your fingers. Now temporarily install your fork spring, spacer, it's loud, and fork cap so that we can torque the damper rod bolt. You don't need to tighten the cap all the way down. Typically, the damper rod bolt would be torqued to 12 to 14 foot-pounds, but you should definitely check your owner's manual to verify that for your specific bike. Next up, we're going to add the fork oil, but first you got to pull off the cap, pull out the spacer, and pull out the fork spring again. Some shop manuals list an oil quantity and weight. If that's the case, that's easy. You just pour out the correct amount of oil and then dump it into your fork leg. However, some shop manuals list an oil height. If that's the case, you're gonna have to take some measurements. It's a good idea to stroke the fork a few times to dispel any air bubbles. If you have to check the fork oil height, you'll need to do so with the fork fully collapsed and the emulator, spring, spacer, and cap off. To check the oil height, use a tape measure to verify the distance from the top of the oil to the top of the fork leg. This is a measurement that you'll find in your shop manual. I set my finger at 150 millimeters, so that's the top of the fork tube. And then the oil is showing 25 millimeters, giving us an oil height of 125 millimeters. If your fork oil is too high, you can either pour some oil out, hand siphon it out with a hose, or make some sort of oil height device like I've done here. This thing's pretty easy. You set the rod to the desired oil height, stick it on the fork, and then suck out the excess oil. With the oil in the fork, you can now install your gold valve emulator if you haven't done so already, then slide in the fork spring, doing so slowly to make sure you don't get splashed, then a washer, then your spacer, remaining washers, and finally, your fork cap. All right, the fork leg is back together and you are halfway done. Hopefully this video helped you save a little bit of money and taught you a few things about your suspension. Good luck with the next fork leg and check back next time for more tips from the MC Garage.